Hello? Can you hear me? Hi, my name is Roberta Annan. Um, thank you for the opportunity to um, um, you have giving me to speak about um, Africa, the land of opportunity for family officers. Um, greetings again from Accra, Ghana, um, where is 6.30 a.m. I am um, very excited and honored to, to be part of the Tropic Summit, um, the Virtual Summit this year. Um, so in my work at Allen Capital Partners, where I'm managing partner, basically started as a result of all the um, um, resource mobilization and fundraising efforts that I made while I was at the United Nations. Um, and during my days at the United Nations, I saw the important um, um, contributions that private capital actually made to solve some of the most drastic socioeconomic challenges, especially in uh, developing countries. Um, I uh, worked on um, strategies to support the Millennium Development Goals at that time um, to address some of the most um, daunting challenges, including climate change, um, to end up extreme poverty, to provide universal education, especially to um, um, in support of the developing countries. And when I saw the impact that, um, you know, uh, private capital actually had on changing some of these drastic challenges, I, I, I just didn't want to leave it there. I wanted to um, be on the private sector side where I could mobilize more resources because being at the UN, of course, things are um, done very structured where it's um, normally um, projects are done, have a lifetime, so normally five years and funding actually are allocated for a lifetime. I wanted to be a part of um, a system that didn't just do, um, um, you know, just short-term projects. I wanted a long-term impact. So I went into private sector to start my company. And when I started my company, I um, basically advised some of these families to allocate money towards social impact projects. Um, and also philanthropic endeavors. And one thing I can say is that Africa is poised for investments. In fact, we're blessed with natural resources. We have um, you know, in abundance, but the most important fact is that natural resources often deplete. You know, your oil reserves will run out, gold reserves, your bauxite, everything is eventually going to deplete. But what we have and we're blessed with on the continent is our human resource. So my work at ASC, ACP, especially with family offices, is to drive investments into human capital development. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, we have a very, we're blessed with a very young population on the continent. In fact, 65% of the young people on the continent are under the age of 25, which to me is a huge investment potential. Um, and it means that we need to bring in more resources to develop that human capital, because this is actually how we are going to revolutionize um, our continent. Um, we missed the industrial boom, we missed the digital boom. I believe the opportunity for us is to use this um, young, talented people on the continent you know, to basically drive our economic development. Um, and so my work has been very, very much focused on that space. And I've been working seriously with family officers to, um, I'll talk about three things that I'm doing now in, um, in, under ACP with family officers and why I see that the continent, they see that potential, right? That young population, which people often think is the ticking time or, or a demographic issue. Um, investors, especially in the family office space, see this as a potential opportunity you know, to come and invest in the continent because no longer are people thinking about natural resources. You know, people are thinking about that human capital potential that Africa has. And of course, with all that Africa has experienced, you know, with, you know, uh, 
taken uh, people into the diaspora from the continent. There's been that link, as uh, missing link. Now it seems that the diaspora are also very interested in coming back to shape up, you know, the future of the continent. And people see that the diaspora are now connecting. So the, the, the future of the continent is looking very bright and also very attractive for investors, especially those in the family office space. Now, there's a funding gap of 1.6 trillion um, to beat the SDGs on a yearly basis. And if you look at the wealth management reports, you realize that a lot of funds are being shifted to private spaces. So, I mean, the world's richest men, you know, um, on a yearly basis make so much money that if some of these funds are divert, um, diverted to, um, to, to solve climate change, vulnerability and um, adaptation mechanisms for Africa, because of course Africa tends to be the most vulnerable when it comes to climate change or where the least contributed to it. Um, when you look at issues like, um, you know, uh, universal education, especially primary and secondary, I see that there's been reforms being taken by countries, but there still needs a, we, we still need a lot more investment to be able to, um, you know, get the level of education that Africans need. We need more to pump in more resources. We need to look at digitizing education so that it's accessible to people that are in rural communities. We need to make sure that their um, you know, uh, connectivity, you know, data, and you know, find ways in which Africa can have more fiber optics or more investments into the teleco. Um, even mobile penetration, which is quite high in Africa, we need to still be able to have people access data to be able to access things that you know, one would normally get on um, um, uh, smartphones. Um, you know, healthcare. I mean, in fact, when COVID-19 pandemic um, um, happened, we were so worried about the continent because we are we're so um, our healthcare system is not robust enough. But of course, we we are such a resilient continent, and we need to do a lot more investment into our healthcare. In fact, we we were, we were saved by the dynamics of this this pandemic, uh, sorry, virus, because of course uh, we didn't have a lot of uh, dead and uh, sick people or. Um, and death here on the continent. Just imagine if it were in the reverse, it would have been a huge problem for us to be able to tackle. So investments need to go into um, healthcare system. Infrastructure, infrastructure is so important. But for me, infrastructure is in two ways. You have tangible and the intangible infrastructure. Family offices often don't go into the tangible to your roads. Um, rarely they, uh, do they go into that. Those are really for the development um, agencies. Um, but um, when you talk about intangible infrastructure, which is really bringing like the digital infrastructure, um, fintech, technology, these are the areas in, that, that, that are of, of interest um, to uh, family offices. So what we are doing is we're working with family offices to bring more funds into creative economy. To me, creative economy, um, the 14 subsectors, including music, film, fashion, um, gaming, uh, just to name a few, um, it's really the tool for inclusive growth and development of our continent. And I think um, this is where a lot of resources will be channeled in the next 10 years, because the creative economy tends to be the highest employer of young people and of women. So you tackle a youth unemployment issue. If you want to create and encourage more entrepreneurship, creative economy is the way to go about it. Media, companies, and all of that. And I'm very heavily involved in that with family offices mobilizing a fund that is going to invest um, resources into this sector and also provide it with the much needed infrastructure, that intangible infrastructure that touched on education, building capacity, intellectual property, you know, addressing all of these things to ensure that there's a robust and thriving creative economy on the continent, because I feel that's what's going to allow Africans to leapfrog um, their development agenda. Um, and then also looking at digitization strategies, I've been heavily involved in that, um, especially looking at creative economy, agri-tech, and other sectors, and how we can use digitization and technology to leapfrog and to look at things differently. We've done it in mobile technology, and now to be able to apply it to other sectors is key, because if you look at what other countries are doing in terms of AI and um, you know, artificial intelligence and blockchain, I think we're lagging behind. But we also have unique techniques um, that 
we you know we're blessed with here on the continent it's just a matter of applying technology to it so that it can scale can have that economy to scale i'm very excited about um, initiatives like AFTA because we can take advantage of intra-Africa trade and you know we're blessed with such a large population of almost two million people and very little trade on each, with with um, one another. So this is a great opportunity for us to be able to do that. Um, and um, you know the third thing is uh, in terms of our social impact work, we're very heavily involved in social impact. We are trying to protect. Um, the culture and heritage of Africans, so that there isn't a lot of you know, appropriation of our culture, um, which me, which is basically people taking our ideas, our you know heritage, and creating products outside and then selling it to us as a premium. So we are looking at ways to add value on the continent, so value addition on the continent, from cocoa to fashion to weaving to shea butter. We're very interested in projects that add value. Because the moment you add value, you add tremendous contribution to um, the GDP of a country. And Africa has always been an extractive and export, um, you know, focused on extraction and export and exploitation. But now the idea is to really add value and really um, uh, boost the manufacturing sector on the continent and utilizing the young dynamic generation that needs jobs and opportunities to be able to, um, you know, lift up, uh, when I talk about upward mobility, to be able to take themselves out of poverty and live better lives. Because when they do, they're able to make informed decisions about their health, their education, their life choices, even marriage, you know. Um, these are all things that, um, you know, are done as a re result of poverty and coming operating from a scarcity mindset. But when you create that environment for a middle class to thrive, um, you know, you lift, there's something got up on mobility where you lift people from poverty into the middle class and they are able to stand and drive their economies because you do need a, a, a middle class. The disparity between rich and poor is such a wide gap on the continent. So this is where we are focused. This is where family offices are, fo um, are interested in putting their dollars to ensure that these things, they're doing good at the same time making a profit. Um, and it's great for that I see the government are setting structural um, reforms to ensure that when investing dollars do come here, they're able to return um, um, some kind of interest or an ROI for the investors. Um, and I think most of the African countries are opening up to bring in more private sector. I see this happening in Ethiopia and Angola. Um, and I'm very excited to see that because it makes our job easier as an advisor to family offices to bring investments when they know that their money is not going to be stuck or going to be linked to corruption. But, you know, they are able to make a difference, make an impact, and also make a profit because it's all about the triple pot, uh, bottom line, which is people, profits, and then people, uh, planet, and then profits. Thank you so much for having me and I'm excited um, to share my experience and also listen to the other panelists. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.